Do you love the Lord tonight? I want to preach tonight on one of your favorite subjects. Amen. Discouragement. <laughs> Has anybody here ever been discouraged? The rest of you repent and, and say you know what I'm talking about. Sister Grimsley, would you like to testify? Man, I'm not going to be up here long. I got about 150 pages. <laughs> oh, you'll be repenting about that one. Amen. <clears throat> what a church. Let's pray for the pastor and the first lady of the church right now. Would you join me in that prayer? Father, I ask you tonight to touch Brother and Sister Blankenship, to minister to them. Lord, take care of their needs. Give them strength. Minister to them tonight. Prepare this church for what you have for it in the future. For you have great plans for this church. And we ask you to prepare our hearts and our lives for the things you have for us. Everybody say in Jesus' name. If you have your Bible, let's turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Let's read verse 4. There it is right there. Still shaking and trembling. I thought about that this, this afternoon at the motel room that I was so glad there wasn't something wrong with me. I looked at it this morning and I said, Lord, is it shaking? He didn't say nothing. <laughs> but I was so glad you thought it was shaking too, amen. How about reading that aloud and together, please? Well, that, that's a little scary, isn't it? Who comforteth us in all our tribulation. Like, like there's going to be a bunch of them. And there has been. But there's more of God than there is of trouble. Everybody shout it. There's more of God than there is of trouble. Let's lift our voices up and pray. Would you join me, please? Jesus, thank you tonight as we come together one more time to worship you in spirit and to worship you in truth. Thank you for this wonderful, marvelous church. Thank you for what you're doing here, Lord. And we know that you're going to do great and mighty things. Because if God be for us, all things are possible. Reach over, just lay your hand on somebody, and let's pray, God, give them ears to hear what the Spirit has to say tonight. In Jesus' name. The Lord bless you. You may be seated. I want to talk for just a few moments, and if I go past a few moments, I'll repent of it and just keep on going. Amen. Discouragement is the opposite of encouragement. If that was the end of the message, we'd dismiss and be gone. Some of you, that's no revelation, you know that, but we, we don't understand when we're in a battle that discouragement is something that's going to happen. Sometimes we're discouraged because things didn't turn out the way we thought they would. There was a fellow in the Bible that was sick in his body and actually had leprosy. And he'd heard about this man of God and he, and he comes, he's a man of power and he comes with all of his people riding with him. And he goes to the house of where the prophet is. And he said, I heard back in my hometown that you, you was a prophet and and, uh, and I want you to heal me. I've got this terrible leprosy. But you see, the, the thing was, the prophet didn't even get out of the bed. Amen. He sent his servant out and said, uh, Go tell him I said to jump in the water. Boy, how, how deep is that? I mean, what's that like? Amen. He, and he said, I thought. Everybody say, I thought. And, and that's always going on in church. I, I thought the preacher was going to do so and so. 
I thought that woman that's in charge of a certain part of the church, I thought she was going to do so and so. And while I'm talking about that, didn't the lady that was up here speaking a few moments ago, didn't she do a good job? Come on, give her a hand clap. Come on. How many believe something's going to float in your life again? God's going to float your keys. Amen. I actually have people call me. I'd say several dozen times in my ministry. Somebody just called me the other day and said, they didn't say, hello, how are you doing? They said, man of God, could you tell me where my keys are right now? Oh, sure, I was just thinking about that. I was out there on my lawnmower thinking about somebody's going to call me and ask me where your keys are. Not how are you doing? I got your check in the mail for 100 bucks. Where's my keys at? And sometimes I know and sometimes I don't know. And sometimes God wants you to find them yourself. Amen. But He knows where they are. He knows where you are. He knows what you're going through. Knows what you've already been through. And if you're discouraged tonight, He's about to transition you from being discouraged to being encouraged. He's about to transition you from being in the valley to being on the mountaintop. How many believes in a God of transition that in a moment's time He can change where you are He can change who you are. He can change how bad you feel to how good you feel. Does anybody believe in the transitioning power of the Holy Ghost? Come on, clap your hands and shout it out loud. Transition me, Holy Ghost. Say it again. Transition me, Holy Ghost. The devil is a thief and a robber. The devil brings discouragement. The devil steals your joy. He steals your peace. He steals your contentment. If you got any to begin with. Just thought I'd say that. Brother Grimms, I don't like it. I don't care. Done said it. Too late. Not only are there people in here, but if we are online, which I was notified we could be or we couldn't be. But if we are, somebody needs to be getting this that's not even in this service tonight. You have been discouraged too many times. God is about to change your discouragement. If you think the Holy Ghost is just for talking in tongues, you have got a surprise coming. You're about to feel the joy of Holy Ghost baptism. Would somebody shout it out loud? There's joy in having the Holy Ghost. I said there's joy in having the baptism of the Holy Ghost. There's discouragement when the devil tells you he's going to do this and that. But there is encouragement when God says, I'm bigger than the devil that's against you. I'm bigger than the problems that are against you. How many believe your God will always be bigger than your problems are? Shout unto the Lord and praise Him tonight. Amen. Discouragement comes. And it comes often, it comes when we're focusing on the problem and not on the solution. Pentecostal people, how many of you are? Thank you three for being here. I'm glad all of you Baptists are here with us. Pentecost is an experience. It wasn't a one-time experience like we're supposed to have Pentecost Sunday. I've got a pastor that asked me almost two years before this coming Pentecost Sunday would I be at his church. But Pentecost is more than an organization. You might be one of those organization-minded people, but I want to tell you before Pentecost ever became an organization, it was an experience. And I want to see it in not just an organization, not just a group of people, but I want to see Pentecost in the way it started, an experience. How many of you have got people in your family you want to experience Pentecost? Do you want them to experience Pentecost at any cost? It will cost you something to be Pentecostal. Come on now, but how many is ready to pay the price? 
I said this church is about to pay the price to be Pentecostal. Let them laugh, but we're going to get the last laugh. When the rapture of the church takes place and in a moment we are changed, we're going to have the last laugh. This flesh is going to put on immortality and you're going to be glad. You have been baptized in Holy Ghost and fire. I wish you'd shout fire about three times. There's some fire coming into this church again. There's apostolic one God fire coming back in this church again. We're going to quit living in the smoke of Pentecost and we're about to live in the fire again. God's going to burn us. God's going to purge us. God's going to shake us up and wake us up. Are you ready next year for the fire of Pentecost to flow through this church? Come on and jump up and shout with me. I'm ready for the fire of Pentecost. I want to feel the warmth of the Holy Ghost. I want to feel the fire of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Worship the Lord and praise Him tonight. We are, the message is about, for a few moments it will be about discouragement. And discouragement will occur when things don't work out the way we wanted it to. The man that had the leprosy and came up with his troop, this young man comes out, he's an assistant to the prophet. And Some people say we used to have prophets. Well, let's see, what did God say about the fivefold ministry? He said he put it for the perfecting of the church. Right? Let me ask you a question. Is the church perfect? So we must still have all of those ministries and we must have a need for them. Somebody said, well, I don't have them. You don't have my wife, but she's still real. You don't have my dog, but my dog's still real. You don't have a truck I just went in debt for, but it's still real. Just because you don't have it, it means one thing. It means you don't have it. A lot of things we don't have that are real. I'd like to have a brand new Mercedes. I don't have one, but they're real. I passed one on my way here. And I thought they probably paid three or four times more for that than I did my van out there. But I passed them anyway. It's not what you're driving, it's how you're driving it. Amen. Quit letting the devil drive you around the block, getting the Holy Ghost, and take him for a ride. Quit letting the devil walk on you every morning. You get up and walk on him. And when you got him under your foot and his head's barely sticking out, look down at him and say, Hey, I want to ask you something. Who do you, how do you like that? That's a Holy Ghost foot on you. That's a one God tongue talking shoe on you. Quit letting the devil walk on you. Squirm your way out from under his foot. Step on him and ask him, how do you like it down there? That's where God intended you to be is under my foot. God didn't intend me to be under the foot of the devil. For the Bible said heaven is God's throne. The earth is his footstool. That means that everything down here is under his foot. How many is ready for your trouble to be under your father's foot? Come on, shout it with me. Devil, I'm going to get up in the morning and put you where you belong, under my foot. Oh, you, you don't want to hear this tonight. You don't, you don't want to hear it. I know you don't. So I'm going to quit preaching it just as soon as I get through preaching it. Somebody say discouragement. The thief has robbed us of our expectancy. We've got where, do you remember when you were young, any of you, and I know that, no, I'm not going to say that. I, I came here tonight and said I'm going to be nice. I was mean this morning, but I'm going to be nice tonight. Amen. Do you remember when you used to expect things? you remember when you used to be excited about tomorrow? Now, now it's like as you're getting older, it's like every day is root canal day. People say they got to go to church like it's a root canal. I got to go to church in the morning. I got to pray. My God, I got to pay my tithes. 
No, I get to pay my tithes. No, I get to go to church. No, I get to lift my hands. No, I get to back the pastor up. No, I don't have to get up and shout, but I can get up and shout. No, I don't have to testify, but I want to testify. I got a testimony. Has anybody got a testimony? You've been through it all, not by might nor by power, but Jesus made a way where there seemed to be no way. Shout it out loud. I got a testimony. Come on, some of you white people say it. I got a testimony. I've been healed by the power of God. I've been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. I know who God is. Did I come to the right church tonight? Amen. Amen. If you're out there listening to us by electronic means, I just want to tell somebody, I fell on the way to church. Somebody's going to be listening. You may hear that nobody heard this, but somebody's going to be listening outside of this building. And God is about to break that season of discouragement in your life. Some of you are in this building tonight. You've had one discouragement after another, but God is about to change your season. Is anybody listening to me? Here a while back, we were going through winter. I didn't think winter would ever get over. One of our daughters, the first snow that we had, she's out, she lives now up in Pennsylvania. They're out in the snow making snow angels. By the time it was over, they were making snow demons. But I said, honey, hold on a little bit longer. Your season's changing. I felt like telling somebody when I got here tonight, your season is about to change. That hold that the devil's had on your family is about to lose its grip. Come on, that hole that the devil's had on this city, there's been a demon in charge of this city, but he's not in charge of it anymore. There's been a devil trying to control this church, but it's not in his control anymore. This church is under the control of Almighty God. The future of this church doesn't belong to Satan. The future of this church belongs to God. I wish you would jump up and get excited with me. This church has got a destiny. I said there's a destiny in front of this church and the devil cannot rob it. The devil cannot stop it. Is anybody here excited about the destiny and the future of this church? Quit testifying about how bad it's been and let's have a testimony. I feel the power of God. There's a lot at the end of the tunnel there's a God that's going to do what he said he would do next year is a year of fulfillment of prophecies shout and praise the Lord and worship him come on come on and let's worship come on come on and worship the Lord worship him tonight who comforteth us in almost all of our tribulation Somebody say no. Who comforteth us in 99% of our tribulation? Who? What is His name? Did it say all? That's all that you've been through? That's what you're facing right now and what you're going to face tomorrow? God said, I'm with you. When my wife a few months ago, I think it was like 10 months ago now in August, when she rushed me to the hospital, there was a little demon running beside our vehicle. He smiled at me, sneered at me, said, you'll never make it to the hospital. But there we were, pulling up at the hospital. He said, you'll never make it in the building. I was losing my breath. I was fainting, passing out. But when I got inside, I said, here I am. Where are you at? The first things the doctors asked me, are you suicidal? I mean, I'm sucking wind. I can't hardly breathe. I'm turning all kinds of colors. I can't hardly say anything. And I said, I want to ask you something. I was dying back at my house. I begged my wife to break the speed limit. <laughs> Honey, I don't care if you blow the motor up. Just keep on going. Tell the policeman you'll pay him when you get there. I said, would we have drove that fast? And what am I doing here at the hospital trying to get some help if I'm suicidal? I want to clear something up to you. I have never wanted to kill myself. But I won't tell you the rest of the story. 
Think about it. I've never wanted to get rid of me, but I have. Never mind. Woo! Clear my mind up, Lord. You know some of you felt the same way. God, if you don't take care of them, I will. But he said, I'll put no more upon you than you're able to bear. It's better that God shuts them up than you do. Do you believe God's going to take care of your enemies? Because if God be for you, who can be against you? Somebody's about to shake that discouragement right off of your soul, right out of your mind. You're going to go home tonight and say, you old demon that's been trying to run this house and fill us with discouragement, I'm rebuking you in the name of Jesus. I'm taking authority over discouragement in my marriage. I'm taking discouragement. I'm taking authority over it against discouragement in my church. If you never get to sing in this church again, don't be discouraged. If you never get to preach in this church, don't be discouraged. You didn't come here because somebody lets a light shine on you. You're here because there's a light shining through you. Come on and shout in this building. Quit talking about how down and out you are and let's have a testimony. I feel God giving me a backbone. I feel God is healing my sickness. I feel God is touching my family. Are you ready to resist the spirit of discouragement? over lay your hand on somebody and pray for them I want to hear you pray against discouragement right now would you lift your voice up let the devil hear you pray against that attitude of discouragement come on come on you're doing good you're doing good thank you thank you come on come on I feel like somebody's leaving discouragement is leaving Those children that you have prayed for to get saved and you've been discouraged because they haven't got the Holy Ghost, that discouragement is leaving you tonight. You may be due a promotion on your job and it's never come to you, but that discouragement is leaving you tonight. Somebody listen to me. Come on. Discouragement is leaving this building. Discouragement is leaving this ministry. I come against it. Say it with me. You demon of discouragement, I challenge you now on the authority of God's Word. Tell Him bye. Tell Him bye. Goodbye, Satan. Goodbye. Goodbye. Pack your suitcase, leave my family, leave my home, leave my ministry, leave my church, leave my mind. Shout amen and praise the Lord. Come on. Come on, somebody shout with me. Come on and shout with me. Come on, let's shout tonight. Let's praise the Lord. Let's give Him the glory. God says tonight, that devil is gone. God said He defeated him 2,000 years ago. Somebody say it with me. God said. said. Now God created man and woman, put them in a garden. Everybody say a garden. Everybody say a beautiful garden. When God saved you, filled you with His Spirit, He put you in your own special garden. This church is like a garden. It's like a paradise. The devil wants to walk in here and mess things up. So there they were in this garden. They didn't have to work. Oh, what a paradise that must have been. Amen. They didn't have to wait for their social security check to come in. They didn't have to wait for that alimony. Most of the time, men are too sorry to pay. If you're not in here, there's somebody online listening to it. It takes more to be a man than just have to help produce children. Real men raise those children. I've been preaching that for 50 years, and I want to say it one more time. If you want to man up, prove yourself to be a man, and raise those children. Come on, come on and clap your hands and praise the Lord. 
back in this beautiful garden. God had been walking through it every day. The Bible even tells us what time God came into the garden and said it was in the cool of the day. Must have been evening time. Somebody said evening time. I've seen some of the greatest miracles in my service in the evening time. Come on now. The devil thinks he's control of the evening. He thinks he's the God of nighttime. But God is God in the daytime, the nighttime. He's God down in the valley. He's God down on the mountaintop. He's God when you're broke. He's God when you got money. Woo! Shout and praise Him tonight. Come on. Somebody shout discouragement. God came in every time, every evening, God walked in that garden and, and He would say, Adam, according to the Bible, Adam would come running and saying, Here I am. He was glad to meet with God. How many loves to meet with Him every chance you get? Thank you, Tim, for coming. Amen. So God walks in the garden on this day, but something had happened that day. Something had happened and, and Adam never wanted to own up to it that it was his own fault. When uh, Adam had some of that fruit, he said, Lord, you remember that woman that you gave me? Come on, ladies. Watch out. He manned up all right. Yeah. And uh, he said, it was that woman that you gave me. Like he didn't need her. <laughs> sure. And so the woman says, you know that, that devil, that serpent been crawling around him? It was him. And so when he went to the devil, the devil had to just, I done it, amen. <laughs> the devil is bad at being the devil. I, I can't put good with it somehow, it just don't sound right. But the man said it was the woman, the woman said it was the serpent, and the serpent didn't say anything. You see, every day before in the cool of day, when God would walk in the, in the garden, and he would say, Adam, Adam, come run into him. But on this day, he went running away from him. But you could hear him running away because he had on fig leaves. Now, them fig leaves might be green and not make any noise when you pull them off the tree. But when you got them attached to you, in just a few days, they're going to start rotting. And what they covered up yesterday, they won't cover up tomorrow. idea your idea was to give me some of this fruit I got an idea because we found out we were naked God made them so dumb they didn't even know they were naked because he said I got all these fruit trees out here you can have any of them you want I made them all for you but I got this one right here don't touch it somebody say God said we need to go back to what God said Grandma might make the best gravy you ever had, but you're not going to make it to heaven over what Granny said. You've got to go by what God said. Don't you pull your ties out because the preacher preaches on what God said. Don't grab your four and run off because the preacher preaches on what God said. In these last days, we need to hear, Thus saith the Lord. Not a professor. Some people are professing, but they're not possessing. If you're going to profess something, you need to possess it. We went through a few years ago, quite a few years back, it was going around all the organizations. Everybody was talking about that uh, professing something, that if you said it was yours, it was yours. I said, I don't think so. I got the key to my house. Don't come to my house and say you're going to move in. I don't care how much you confess it's yours. It's still mine. It may not be much, but it's mine. Just because you confess something does not mean you possess it. 
But if you'll keep on, amen, in the Holy Ghost saying, God, I'm still claiming that victory. I'm going to claim it till I get it. I've not got it yet. It's been 20 years. It's been 30 years. As a matter of fact, there were some guys one day in the Bible, they said, here I am 40 years later, and I'm still claiming that mountaintop. I'm claiming that victory. I'm claiming the blessing. I haven't got it, but I'm 40 years older, and I still feel as capable to night as I felt 40 years ago. Somebody's 40 years is about to run out. You're about to get that blessing anyway. God is about to baptize you with the same strength that you had the first time you were baptized in the Holy Ghost. Come on and claim it right now. You're about to have as great of a power 40 years later as you had when the windows of heaven opened up and the power of the Holy Ghost came down. Get ready. God is about to do it again. Clap your hands and let's worship the Lord. Come on and let's praise Him tonight. So God walks into the garden. Everybody say God. God walks in the garden and says, where are you? And and I'd like to just ask that question for a moment, not spend a long time on it, but according to the Bible, where are you? That's what I like to do. I like to say that and just let you think. According to... What, where God wants you to be, where are you? And if you're not there, what was it that stopped you from being there? Don't you know that it was sent to your home, it was sent to your family to discourage you? But look at me, devil, I am still in pursuit of it. Look at me, devil. I am a dreamer. I've got a dream tonight. I have not obtained that, that dream, not by might nor by power, but the Spirit of God is about to take me to a place where I can dream again. Come on, somebody get into this. I don't care how old you are or young you are, you're about to turn in to a Holy Ghost dreamer again. If you can have a nightmare, your dreams can digress into nightmares. You can be a dreamer. You can say, God is going to do it again. God is going to stir my family back up. Is anybody ready to enter the promises of God? Come on, let's praise the Lord and worship. Thank you. Thank you very much. Where are you? Turn around and look at somebody and say, where are you? I know, I know, I know some people are going to, I'm right here, can't you see me? But where are you? Where are you when we put the Bible beside you? Where are you when the scales of God's justice, and you sit on one side and they sit on the other side, where are you? How did that work out for you? For we will all be weighed in the scales of God's justice. Somebody say amen. So God walks in and says, hey Adam, every day I've been coming. First thing I want to tell you about that is God didn't ask the question because he didn't know. Don't ever think that God doesn't already know before he asks. Well, if he knows, why does he ask? He wants you to confess. I didn't say be Catholic. God wants a good, honest confession out of you. So, Can you imagine the discouragement that Adam must have felt? Can you imagine being in your own little spiritual garden and God's been talking to you in the cool of the day every day. Here comes God. You know, we have some people come to our house. It's, oh, my God, here they are again. You know the same people I do, don't you? Here they are again. Don't you love it when those people that's been there an hour longer than you could take it and they go, well, we're going. And they head to the door and they go, one more thing. Oh, my God. <laughs> but when it comes to God, there should be a, a good feeling because he's come to walk with you in the garden. And Adam says, I'm over here. Where are you? Well, I'm, I'm over here. And uh, my wife made us these little aprons out of fig leaves. Everybody say, fig leaves. 
you can't cover up your sin with anything but the blood. Come on, say it with me. I can't cover up my sin. Say it again. I can't cover up my sin with anything but the blood. But shout it. There is power in the blood. There is coverage in the blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And I'm over here with this little apron on. Which reminds me of the way some people look in the good old summertime. They got their little apron on. If <laughs> don't, don't push my button about that, amen. I, I'm trying to be real nice about this. Trying to keep it where they don't have to cover the children's ears up. Well, the thing about those fig leaves is they started dying as soon as you pulled them off. As soon as you started making your covering out of something beside the blood, it started dying. Oh, but there's power in the blood. Say it, I cannot hide from God, but I can hide in God. For the Bible said, my life is hid with Christ. And when He shall appear, I shall appear with Him also. Has anybody got your mind made up? I might be hid in the garden tonight, but I'm about to get my house back in order again. And the next time you come in this garden, I'm not going to hide from you. I'm going to run out and I'm going to say, I have sinned. Everybody else's problem. The pastor even said to me once, Brother Grimsley, if you knew that man like I did, you wouldn't have prayed for him. I said, if you really knew him, you'd be down there praying for him every service. That's just my feelings on it. From my vantage point, I can say that. Watch out when you say it. There's power in the blood. My question is, where are you? When you read your Bible, when the preacher's preaching, when you hear the Word of God, when conviction comes on you, where are you when God walks into your little paradise? And he says, I'm over here, God, I am naked. And then, and then the, the second question, God had three questions when he come that one day. The first one was, where are you? And the second one was, who told you you were naked? Because I made you so dumb, you didn't even know what it meant. I mean, my God, there's only two of you out here. All right. You can't be peeking at your neighbors. All right. Amen. Now, come on, help me out here. Who told you? Well, uh, you see that woman? We, we want to blame it on everybody. When it comes time to man up, my God, it's the woman's fault. When it comes time for the woman to woman up, we put it on somebody else. The church has got to come to a time where we say, you know what, I disobeyed you. And I'd have probably had some of that fruit even if my wife wouldn't have picked it. I've been looking at it. I've been eyeballing that thing. I want to tell you as a man of God, I feel like some of you have been eyeballing something. God's telling you to quit looking at it. Take care of what you got at your house. You won't be looking at what somebody else has got at their house. Say, preach it now, preacher. Woo! Woo! My! Mm. Mm. One of you young men come up here and hold this thing up so I can smell of it. Come here. Come here. Somebody come up here. Come on. Pick it up a little bit so I don't have to bend down so far. Pick it up. Let me... That, that's just such a pretty tree. Just, mm, you can set it down. My God, I may as well go ahead and pull one of them off. I done touched it. I done smelled of it. I may as well just go ahead and pick it. But now you know what I do? I want to share it. Watch out when people in the church want to share their tragedy with you. Watch out when they want you to go where they went, where they shouldn't have went. Is the microphone still working? Watch out when they want to share their sin with you. 
come on now. It just has a domino effect over and over and over. Learn how to say no and keep on saying no. Resist the devil and he shall flee from you. God said, somebody say it, God said, don't mess with that tree. That's what happened, God said. But the devil said to the woman, God didn't really mean that. And we've got people, that, not only in other organizations, but we got people today in Pentecost that are plenty crossed. Let's say that together. Let's learn that. It's a wonderful saying. Say it. We've got people in Pentecost that are plenty crossed. do anything. I just do whatever I want to do. Nobody's going to catch me. Watch out. Be sure your sins will find you out. Adam! Uh, I'm, I'm over here, Lord. And, and I got this little apron of fig leaves on. and Here she comes right now. My wife made me do it. And the wife says, there's the devil right over there. He made me do it. And the devil didn't have anybody to blame it on. I wonder if we really are doing the right thing when we blame it on somebody else. It's like a man with a temper that can't control his own temper. He goes crazy, beats his wife around, and he says to her, See what you made me do? You're a dummy, sir, for beating on a woman anyway. Don't mess with me, I'll say it again. I don't consider that to be much of a man. Okay, where are you? Who told you that? Turn around and ask somebody. Say, where are you? Say, who told you that? And then, and then he wants to know, what have you done? You know, you, you can make all kinds of excuses, all kind, but when God just looks right at you and says, I told you to do this, I told you not to do that, and God looks right at you and pins you down and says, what have you done? Uh, um, uh, you know that tree that you told me not to mess with? Somebody say, God said. Do you believe in what God said? Don't you think for one second that he didn't know? He was looking for a confession. Confessing to God is a good thing. I said, confessing to God is a good thing. You do not have to have a man that you confess to, but it's time for all men and all women to make a confession to God. I have failed you. Usually the person that's always pointing at somebody else in the church is trying to hide their own. But you can tell when somebody's done wrong. You can hear the crunching of the fig leaves. Because they're dying. They used to look so cute on you. But as you're getting older and older, the little apron don't look quite so appealing. What you need is some more blood. How many is ready for some more blood? Does anybody want some more of the blood applied to you? Lift your hands up and say, wash me once more in your blood. For Father, I have been in this garden. I have had this wonderful time. You have built me such a beautiful place, such a beautiful garden. This church is God's garden. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? But listen to this. The devil has come and trampled in this garden. But get ready, church. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. God is about to clean this garden up again. I said don't get discouraged. God is about to walk through this garden in the cool of the day. Are you ready for the Holy Ghost to clean? My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. He is about to clean this beautiful garden back up again. Shout and worship the Lord and honor Him in this house. Come on. Come on. Come on and honor the Lord. Honor Him right now. Would you please do that? If you believe God is about to clean this garden up and make it holy again, praise Him for it. That's it. Thank you for standing up. Someone listening to us out of this service, God is about to clean your garden up. You're about to have that feeling of purity again.
Reach over and touch somebody. Pray for them right now and say it. God's cleaning your garden up again. Come on, come on. I feel the presence of the Holy Ghost in this service. I see people praying one for another. Come on, and you're doing a good thing right now. God is cleaning this church up, getting it ready. All the hell that you have been through has actually been the cleansing power of God, getting us ready for the greatest move this church has ever had in its history. Come on. Come on. Come on. Everybody, please stand to your feet if you will. Let's remain standing. I'm going to finish this way. Come on and stand. Somebody say, give me ears to hear what God has to say to the church. The devil has pronounced judgment on the church. The devil has lied about this church. But God is saying, wait just a moment. I've still got something to say about that church. That church is my church. I said, that church is my church. This church doesn't belong to the devil. It belongs to your heavenly Father. He said, upon this rock, I will build my church. And even though the devil has come against this church, a 2,000-year-old prophecy said, he will not prevail. Say it with me. Devil, you will not prevail. You may be relentless. You may be intimidating. But God said, you will not prevail against the church of the living God. If you'll just remain standing with me, I'll finish. Turn around, please, and say it with me. Tell somebody God said. God said. You, you may not have needed this yet, but you will. He said, I'll never leave you. Amen. When I was on the tour into Texas for almost a month, and we just got back just two or three days ago. I run across a lot of people in churches there, and they felt like God had left them. But it does not happen. God said, I will never leave you. I've heard pe people say, God has left that person. I've heard preachers over and over and over get up behind the pulpit and say, God is a God of a second chance. That is a lie. In my life, He's given me more than two chances. Can I get a testimony about that? Can I get a witness from anybody in this house? Has he given any of you out there more than a second chance? I want everybody that he, you believe he's given you a hundred chances. Clap your hands. Is there anybody out there? He's probably given you a thousand chances. Clap your hands. Say thank you God. Say thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy. When you run down Hallelujah Boulevard, it'll not just be because of your baptism. It'll be because of a God of a thousand chances. Say it with me. God said, He's a present help in the time of need. Let's say it together. You got a need? You got a God. Say it. I got a need. I got a God. Reach over and touch somebody. Say, you got a need? Say, yes, I do. Say, you got a God. When you've got a need, you got a God. And when you've got a God, He shall supply all of your needs according to His riches and glory. Somebody join me. Let's say it. God said. God said. I love that, don't you? He said, I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee. Everyone in this building. I, I am not Catholic. I never have been Catholic. I'm not here to preach against the Catholic Church. But let me tell you about this. Confession is good for the soul. Hold your hands up right now and say, you see ever sin in my life. Say it. Say, you see ever fading fig leaf. Say, you hear the crunching of my own covering. 
I've tried to cover things that I've done, but I'm failing at it. With your hand up in the air, say it again. I need a freshing of the blood. I need my wrongs and my faults and my failures. I need them covered in the blood. Hallelujah. There's power in the blood. Come on, come on. You're doing good. You're doing good right now. Come on. While you remain standing, listen. Say it, God said. Those that endure to the end shall be saved. They've rushed me to the hospital. I'm sitting there perfectly still in a chair. The doctor comes over and hooks me up to this. My heart rate, a resting heart rate was 300 plus. Resting 300 plus. The other day, at almost 70 years old, after being outside mowing the yard, trimming the limbs, doing whatever my wife wanted me to do. <laughs> Wise man. I am no dummy. I might have been born at night time, but it wasn't last night. Went in and took my heart rate and my blood pressure, my not resting heart rate, but sweating heart rate was 84. Is God good? God said, I am the Lord God that healeth thee. If you need a miracle, put your hand up in the air right now. God, I believe in mass miracles. I believe the day is not only coming, but we're living in that day right now when we're going to see mass miracles in the church. We're going to see tumors fall off. We're going to see backs healed. We're going to see not only just a healing, but we're going to experience creative miracles. Lord, I speak tonight a a creative miracle. Give somebody a new set of kidneys. Give somebody here a brand new heart tonight. Touch somebody, Lord. Give them new kneecaps and new joints in their body. Somebody claim it with me right now. I want to hear you Pentecostal say it. I believe in creative miracles. God's going to pull your miracle right out of His parts department. God is in this building. Say it with me. God said... I am the Lord God that healeth thee. Brother Grimsley, I'm not good enough. Brother Grimsley, I'm not holy enough. You don't get your healing on what, who you are. You get your healing on who God is. I have saw, you may not agree, but it will not take away the testimony. I've seen God heal sinners. And I saw that sinner turn their life over to God. I believe in creative miracles. And it is a word from the Lord. You need to write it down. Get ready. Sister Bimri, there's going to be records of creative miracles in this church. There's going to be some x-rays from an x-ray machine by a doctor that said, look, that's what it looked like. But look what happened after prayer. God didn't just have power when He made you. He gave you those parts the first time. He can do it again. He made you one heart. He can make you another heart. I want people with kidney problems. You got any kind of kidney trouble, come stand up here right now. Amen. Anybody, anybody that has any kind of kidney, even infection in your kidneys, dialysis, they, maybe they've been taught, just come stand right there. That's it. Just stand right there. That's good. Come on. Come on and stand. That's it. That's all. That's what God wants me to consider to you. I want the rest of you. I want you to help and pray. Somebody say, I'm going to help you. If you're there for that, sister.
producing not enough. Mine's producing too much. But the devil's still the devil. Whether it's too much or too little, I believe I have not done this about kidneys in 50 years of my ministry. I've never called for everybody in the church with kidney problems to come up. But here's what I want some of you to do. I want some of you to come stand right behind these people. Amen. Would you help? Here, here's the reason. Somebody say why. Because I believe in a body ministry. I don't believe I come here because I come here. Pastor Bimri or Pastor Blankenship sits back on the side and we're a team. I come. I Don't run to me and tell me something about them. I'm a team player. You're telling the wrong guy. That's my brother right there. One church member run out of a church one time, met me out in the parking lot and said, we're about to send our pastor packing. We want to know if you'll be our pastor. I said, go back in the church, sit down and shut up. I said, if you'll go behind his back, when I get here, you'll go behind my back. Only difference between me and him is I'll know it. Are you ready to pray for kidneys right now? Are you ready? I want you to get a hold of God now. Some of you get your hand on them. Do you believe in creative miracles? Right now, Lord, every person in this line, right here with Sister Bimry, Lord, that was the first one up here, I'm praying for kidney problems tonight. I'm praying, God, that healing virtue will flow. One of you run up here and get me the anointing oil. Somebody that knows where the anointing oil is. Come on. Help me out. You go by and anoint him with oil. That's it. Go right on down the line. In the name of Jesus, may the power of God come on these kidneys tonight. May I, yes, ma'am. Touch her right in here. Touch her where the kidneys are. Be healed. In the mighty... Obakata, italamurandalama, shabo, italamahai. Oh, Maha Shindala Mohosai. May the miracle take place tonight. Not a healing, but a miracle. A creative miracle. Heal the filters of this body. Let healing virtue. Let healing virtue. I believe God. Believe Him right now. Believe Him now. In Jesus. Makarindala Mohosai. We lay hands on the sick tonight. And you said in your word that the sick shall recover. Let a recovery come on them. Start at the end. Start with the last one. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the holy name. Let virtue, healing, miraculous virtue. Let it flow tonight. Let it flow from the throne room of Almighty God. Heal kidneys in this service right now. In Je Woo! Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Come on. Come on. Shout it. Say it with me. God said, You shall lay your hands on the sick and they shall recover, Sister Bimbre. It is the will of God to heal you. Every eye problem that has been worsening come to the front of the line. Only people with floaters or irritations or blurry spots that's been coming up there. Your vision has been getting less and less. Please get on the very front row, if you will. Sister Grimsley, have I, where are you at? There you are. Have I ever failed to walk around the building and pray for people in 50 years? Have I ever done this in 50 years? When I come out of the hospital, pastor after pastor was calling me and he said, they said this, some of the greatest men in Pentecost said, your ministry's not going to be less, it's going to be greater and greater. 
you're going to end up praying for more people than you've ever prayed for before. I said, how am I going to do that? And God said, I'm going to do it, not you, but I'm going to do it through mass miracles. Hold your hands up and say, I don't deserve it. Say, I didn't deserve the Holy Ghost, but you gave me that anyway. I didn't deserve my name in the Lamb's book of life, but you put it there anyway. Say, I don't deserve healing right now, but by your stripes, say it, I'm claiming it on the authority of God's Word. Somebody join me. I believe in miracles. I believe in the laying on of hands. Go down that line if you will, sir. Grab that anointing oil. Start right over here. Start right over here. Come on. Come on, you're young. Hurry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't be in mind told to hurry, do you? Just keep going. If you run out of oil, get another one. Be healed in your eyes. May this family be healed. Floaters disappear. Blind spots disappear. Equilibrium be healed. Irritation in the eyes. Stagnation in the eyes. My God, let eyes be healed tonight. Let their eyes come open. Let them see as they have not seen in years. Let the vision of their childhood return to them. Hebo, are you in the line? My Lord and my God, touch my brother, my friend. Open up his eyes. Give him clarity tonight. Clarity. Abba, shalavo, shatai. Hallelujah. 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 May healing virtue flow through your eyes tonight. Pastor Bimbry, come right here and join me. Jesus name in Jesus name come on come on come on say it with me God said God said by my stripes you were healed Woo! come on I see it on you I see virtue 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 is on you floaters disappear blind spots disappear equilibrium be healed Rala Moshai Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. It's not new glasses they need. They need the old power of God. They need to feel that Shekinah glory. Fall on them tonight. For, say it with me, church. God said, they shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. Woo, hallelujah. My Lord, woman. The power of God's on you. The power of God's on you to heal you. The power of God is present to heal you. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ma'am, pull your glasses off for just a moment. Hold them in your hand. Is it all right if I lay my hands on your eyes? Be healed. May the healing virtue of the Lord Jesus Christ come on those eyes tonight by His power. Where's the end of my line at? Right here. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hold your glasses. In Jesus' name. Put your hand on His eyes. In Jesus' name. Let healing virtue. Was he the last one? Let's give the Lord a big hand clap. Let's give the Lord a big hand clap. Say it, I believe it. Say, God said it. I believe it. I'm feeling good about this. I don't like what you're doing. I don't care. We don't need preachers that are people pleasers. We need some people at the pulpit that are God pleasers. Woo! If you need another miracle, here I'll tell you what, this one is coming to me. Any kind of blood pressure, trouble, 
heart rate trouble. Hallelujah, Come to the very front, if you will. And I talked about in my ministry double dipping. Tonight, I think I'm seeing some triple dipping. Don't be sticking your chicken in my dip. Get your own ranch dressing. Amen. I knew I was waiting for something. There it is. Honey mustard. Do you believe God can and will heal your blood pressure tonight? Touch your heart tonight. If I change in just a few days from a heart rate of 300 plus, and people, I've said that before, it couldn't have been. I'm not a liar. I beg your pardon. I know what it was. The devil pointed it out every time I took it. 300 plus. When I was sitting still, I was just. Yeah. 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 And then people would call me and go, Brother Benz, I heard you were a little under the weather. <laughs> <laughs> you were over the weather. <laughs> <laughs> I said, let's see what this gentleman's doing right here. Put your hand over your heart. Say, take control, Heavenly Father, of my heart rate. Say, you knew before scientists did. Say, you knew when you created my heart what the proper heart rate, what the proper blood pressure should be. Make mine tonight. Make mine. Set it where it should be. Because I believe and I receive a creative miracle. Hallelujah. I believe something's happening to you right now. Don't be surprised if you feel that Shekinah glory coming all over you tonight. It's in this house. Miracle working power is in this house tonight. Adjust heart rate, blood pressure, up and down, back and forth. Let it be what it's supposed to be. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Reach over and touch one another. I may not be able to get to every one of you. Somebody reach over Put your hand on someone else. God said by His stripes you were healed. By His stripes. The Bible said pray one for another. Everybody out there, pray for somebody. Pray for a miracle, a creative miracle tonight. In Jesus, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Don't give up on your dreams. Woo! Shabbat They told me once, don't get excited. Don't try to move around very fast. So I was driving by church. I went in, got the keys to the church. Because the doctor and the devil and the whole bunch of them told me, don't you move very fast. Amen. I got in that building, and I ran around and around and around. And I said, hey, devil, I showed up. Where are you at? You say, you better watch out talking like that. I wasn't talking to God. I was talking to the devil. I was running around that building with my daddy. I was born in 1949 to Bodie Dupree Grimsley. That was my daddy's name. But I got born again later to Jesus. Hallelujah. I said, how many got born again? Did anybody get born to the water? Did anybody get born to the Spirit? 
kick that devil out of the way and tell him, that's my daddy. Amen. Amen. A few years ago, there was a saying going around, who's your daddy? Every time I heard somebody say that, I wanted to shout out, Jesus is. He's God in the Father. He's God in the Son. He's God in the Holy Ghost. He's all three in one. Say it again with me. He's God in the Father. He's God in the Son. He's God in the Holy Ghost. He's all three in one. Woo! Reach over and touch somebody and say, Be healed in Jesus' name. Woo! Come on. Come on! Yeah! 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 Whose baby is this? Is this your baby? Nephew. Probably don't like to be touched, does he? It's all right. Don't bother him. Jesus, lay your hand on him. Even though I can't, you can touch him Lord right now I will not ignore this child in this wheelchair I will not walk by him to go pray for somebody else in the name of Jesus touch this child and let a miracle take place in this child's life in Jesus name in Jesus name come on I'm going to pray for you a couple of you ladies gather around her my Lord <laughs> Woo! hallelujah you're about to come out. You're about to have a breakthrough. Woman, you are due a breakthrough. In Jesus' name. Go ahead and shout about it. Go ahead and shout about it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Come on and shout about it. Somebody say, can't nobody do me like Jesus can. Say it. God said, by my stripes, you were healed. Past tense. I'm not going to get my healing. I've already been paid for my healing. My healing's already been paid for before He bled for your sin, before He died for your sin, before He hung on the cross for your sin. He was beaten for your healing. And by His stripes, over 2,000 years ago, I claim my healing not because of who I am, but because of who He is. Say it again, God said. God said. Through the prophet Jeremiah, God said, I've got plans for you. Say it again now. Through the prophet Jeremiah, God said, I have plans for you. Do you believe God's got plans for this church? I said, do you believe God's got plans for this church? You've already seen what the devil's plans were. He come in to kill and destroy. But who do you think is going to win in this battle? Old slew foot, skin flint, pinhead, dragon. Or do you think Jesus is going to win this battle? Because you fall flat in your face, God doesn't take the plans that He had for you and tear them up and throw them away. He picks them right back up, holds them right back in our face and back in our spirit and say, this is what your flesh wanted to do, but this is what I, I've got plans for you. I really fully believe there's one God and that He's got a set of plans that no devil can tear up. Oh, join me right now. Say, I want the plans of God to reach a stage of fulfillment in my life. God, 
Get your plans out. Start working on me. Work on my marriage. Work on my home. Work on my ministry. I want to follow through with the plans of God. God, I am decreeing tonight that your plans will be done for this church. Somebody say it. I challenge you right now. Say it. God, your plans will be fulfilled in this church. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, just put your hand on someone. Tell them. Let them hear you say it. God's got plans for you. He's got plans for you. Ask them, do you want them? Right now, every person that is praying, every person that is believing, my, I feel an anointing in this house. I believe miracles are going to take place right now, tonight. Jobs are going to be changed. God's going to move you into better homes. God's going to give you better automobiles. God's going to heal what He's not healed before. Hallelujah. Why? Because God said, Hallelujah. 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 I was at, I was at Brother Edwin Harper's church. I wouldn't be surprised if Edwin Harper hasn't preached at this church. Has he ever been here? He has. I was at his church right after I got out of the hospital. And there's a heart specialist, a cardiac ex- specialist in his church. He's, uh, he's probably in his 70s. Been doing that for years and years and years. And he, he got back in Pastor Harper's church and said, I want, to, I want you to talk to me about what happened to you. He said, I've been messing with people's hearts for years, ever since I was a young man. He said, I can tell you that nobody comes back from 20% of their heart working in about three weeks to out mowing the yard. He said, it don't happen without an act of God. He said, I know every surgery and every procedure that can be done and what has happened to you is a God thing. If you're ready for a God thing to happen to you right now, If you've got anything that you need God to do, finances, healing, just something miraculous, if you've been praying about something and the answer hasn't come, if you have an impossible-looking dream tonight, get both of your antennas up in the air and let's pray to the God that is without failure. Let's pray to the God that can do anything but fail. Let's believe God to reach in to his parts department right now and give you, give you a divine miracle without the laying on of hands, without even being anointed tonight. Be healed, be blessed, be ministered to. May your miracle come to your mind and your spirit. May you reach out with arms of faith and embrace a miracle that is far off tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let's get a shout to go in here. Let a praise come in this place. The devil doesn't want you to shout. The devil doesn't want you to praise God. Praise Him before you ever get your miracle. Praise Him. Let a shout come out of your soul, out of your spirit. Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We have prayed for brother and sister Blankenship, right? Somebody say yes. I want the Bembrys to come up here. I want us to pray for them. You are blessed to have these people here. If they'll just stand right here, I'd like for you to put your hand toward them, if you will. And let's pray for them. Jesus, you promised you'd put no more upon us than we're able to bear. They have had a time 
of being in a battle. But now what's ahead of them? After a great battle comes a great victory. We lay hands on them tonight asking You to give them a very great victory. Hallelujah. It's due. It's time for it. It's time. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. They are a team tonight. They've always been a team. They are team players. Oh, worship God, church. Worship God. Let's wait on the Lord right now. Let's wait on God as you pray for them. Give God an opportunity to speak to them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep praying, church. Keep interceding. Let's wait on the Lord. Let's see what He will do. <laughs> Woo! Oh, oh my. <laughs> my, my. Mm. Obey the Lord. Obey the Lord. Stand there just a moment. Behold, saith the Lord, I will download to you not sentences, not paragraphs, but I will download to you volumes of clarity, one behind another. I will clear it all up, and you will walk in a spirit of clarity. For that season of muddiness and bad waters has passed, before you are clear waters, and I will download volumes. Write it down. Make a note of it. Volumes of clarity is coming to your spirit. Let's worship the Lord. Let's worship Him. Let's worship Him. Worship Him tonight. Oh, hallelujah. May the glory of God come upon them. If you want clarity right now, you can have the same thing. Get your antennas up to heaven. Oh, God, move the confusion out of my home, out of my family, out of my life. I want to walk from this night forward. I need volumes of clarity. Make it clear. Make my path a clear path. I don't want to think I'm in the will of God. I want to know I'm in the will of God. I want clarity of mine. Hallelujah. 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 I need a couple of you ladies to pray for that lady right there. She has a white pocketbook right there. Just raise your hands up to the good Lord. You're all right, honey. You're fine right there. They're coming to you. You don't have to go anywhere. You ladies, come on, put your hands on her. May the power of God come on her now. Come on, Pastor, if you don't mind. In Jesus' name, touch her right now. Give to her a miracle. Touch her digestive system. Heal that woman's digestive. Give her a miracle sent from heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need a miracle in your digestive system. Hold your hands up high if you do. You need your digestive touch tonight. Jesus, every hand, there's a woman, there's one over there, here's a lady, there's a man over there. Keep your hands up, don't get tired. Here's a gentleman here, another lady there. There must be 10 or 12 people. Right now, every hand that is raised, don't get too tired, don't put it down. Every hand that is raised. Lord, they may already be on medication for that, but take them off the medication. Give them a miracle, Lord. Give them a healing tonight. 
Don't let them stop their medication until they start feeling the miracle taking place. Touch their digestive tract. Some of them in their colon, they need to be healed tonight. Let colons be healed. My Lord and my God, don't let them have to take a laxative any longer. Those people that have to have something to put them to sleep at night and to calm their nerves, heal them tonight. In Jesus' wonderful name, I feel miracles taking place in this service right now in Jesus name hallelujah 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 somebody shout it again God said come on church fire it up one more time God said by his stripes I was healed Woo. God said, I am the Lord thy God. Put no other gods before you. God said, I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Besides me, there is no other God. They're just stones and brick and mortar or wood or whatever, but He's the everlasting Father. God said. I love to talk about what God said because I have people to come to me everywhere I go and they'll go, Brother Grimsley, the doctor said. My ex, ex, ex ex-wife said. My brother-in-law that don't care anything about me said. But if you'll just hold on, God's going to clear the fog. And you're going to hear from all of that negative stuff, you're going to hear a clear voice come out. In this wilderness that we're in, sometimes we need a clear voice just to say, Son, daughter, it's your time. I want to pray about jobs right now. I just want to pray about your work and your income and that God will prosper you. Do you believe it's God's will to prosper you? Because people know I come out of the assembly of God and the Trinitarian movement, they'll say, well, he's still got some of those old roots in him. What, what's wrong with the oneness church that can't believe in the God blessing you financially? Where, where did you think there's something wrong in that? If anybody should have the best, it should be the people that know the best. Well, get ready now. I believe right now we pronounce a blessing upon you. Somebody say this. God said. said. One more time. God said. said. Now, say, can you hear me, devil? God said, I will command a blessing, and it will overtake you. Somebody, you can run as hard as you want to, but you will not be able to outrun the blessing that God has commanded on you. Come on, come on. Let's shout the victory. Come on. All over this building, let's shout the victory. Let's praise the Lord. Let's give God the glory. Say it. God is commanding a blessing on me tonight. That's it. Just worship Him all across the house. Thank Him for what He's already done. For things are going to happen in the next few days. Just thank Him for it. God, by faith, we thank You.
When I said earlier that all the announcements are the same except for we have more bread, I didn't know this much word was coming tonight. Amen. He is the bread of life. Aren't you glad you know him? Praise God. He gives us strength. Praise God. Amen. Amen. If you need to go, you can go. If you need to stay, you can stay. And if you need some bread, we've got some in the kitchen. God bless you.